Hi, I'm Eric Moratzka with the Federal Aerospace and Defense part of PTC, and I have the pleasure today of speaking with Dr. Yuri Ivansky. Uh, Yuri has been doing a lot with PTC technology for many years, and we're blessed to have him here at LiveWorks. So probably let me start, uh, Yuri, with uh, asking you, what is your connection to PTC, and specifically, why is BYU connected with the Federal Aerospace and Defense part of PTCs? Started in late 2016. Um, and just shortly thereafter, in fact, within months of being there, uh, we started working with PTC. That came out of a history where uh, we had worked, um, previously I'd worked with the Department of Energy within the National Laboratories, and one of the projects we had was a big project in developing open source software to drive the smart manufacturing platform. And in meeting with some of the companies that were working on that project with the Department of Energy, uh, comments that I would hear in the background and, and in discussions with them was, well, we're never going to use an open source piece of software because we're never going to put our data on that. But this environment that we were working in was teaching us what we needed to have in a platform like that. So when I left the DOE and came here to the university, one of my first goals was I want to find the company who is leading that charge to be able to create the sandbox we need that can tie across the IT and the OT and help us with the convergence between those two. And that's where early on I recognized PTC was leading out in there with their acquisition of Kepware, bringing that on board, allowing us to make easier and easier connections to our operational technology. And minimizing that to where students that don't have to write a custom API to be able to connect into a PLC. Kepware allows them to port across multiple PLCs, multiple controllers, aggregate all that data together, and then we can use it to do the things that are meaningful inside of an operational space. Then we can look at performance. Then we can look at quality. All of the things that we want to measure are now viable to us across all of the different protocols and platforms and hardware right at the touch of our hands, as if, they, as if they were designed to communicate together in the first place. The way that we really work with uh, uh, federal air and defense groups are focused in helping them burn down future risk. We're not going into their factories or dealing with proprietary information, but we're able to take that platform that they're looking at and evaluate that in a non-proprietary way where students can set up very similar systems uh, technologies, softwares, and platforms to be able to look at how those things will be able to be implemented into a factory. And then that helps those companies be able to make that implementation in a faster way. We also at times really become a reality check on are all of the things that PTC have promised quite true. And we get to actually show in many cases we can do a whole lot more even than what you're being promised. How do I tie ThingWorks into my system? Can I talk to the IT networks and the OT networks that are someplace in between? This notion of getting into recognizing all of the pieces of digital transformation can quickly get complex, as you know, and, and can get overwhelming from the amount of pieces that you can get involved. And the piece that I love most of all of, of what we've been doing with ThingWorks and Kepware and Vuforia is that the PTC team has worked hard to be able to make that accessible to our engineering community inside the factories. I don't have to bring an entire IT staff on to be able to create an expert capture experience. I can put a headset on them, let them film it, and they can quickly cut that into meaningful data with spatial awareness and information tied back to the system. For the folks watching uh, that may not have seen your factory in the box, can you describe the two exhibits you had in our pavilion? Absolutely. So. Our focus was really being able to show this complete end-to-end -end digital transformation. We wanted to show how a smart factory works from the notion of base connectivity all the way through being able to show digital performance management and really everything in between. We used a partnership we had with Festo to be able to bring their cyber physical lab here. And it has all of the traditional type of industrial hardware we would expect to see in a given factory. And a small four by four setup that we can uh, portably move and demonstrate with students. On that, we have conveyors, robots, everything that you would expect to see from pneumatic drives and and all of the visualizations with sensors and everything. All of that data is there, and we have that tied back through Kepware. Using a Kep server, it's talking to ThingWorks. And once we get to ThingWorks, all of that data becomes accessible. So from the student's perspective, that's where we really get to see 
the IT and the OT come together. And the platform allows us the ability to showcase that in a way that's meaningful from an educational environment and works great in this kind of a setting where we can show off, here's the entire uh, data infrastructure for a digital factory. For some of you who got to come test that out, you could see that you could fire the fire pneumatic valves, you could actually push uh, data back through ThingWorks to a vision system that would check to see if you've done your work correctly and then give you augmented reality instructions to help you help the machine be set up the way that it needs to. So all of that really enabled because the digital platform was connected from the base all the way from the PLC through the MES and through all of the enterprise systems connected back through ThingWorks and into Kepler. It's awesome. You make it sound so simple, but each one of those technologies that you highlighted, actually none of them are simple. How much of that work has been done by the students? Really, everything we're showcasing are, are projects that were done by students in our labs, in our classrooms, and the opportunity to be here for each of them really becomes this experience to be able to showcase the work that they've been doing. And in many cases, it puts them in a place to see where they fit within the overall world. Uh, sometimes it's easy at a university to be siloed and seeing what you're seeing, and within your own group you feel like an expert. As you come to an event where you're meeting the people who wrote that software and you're talking to people that are full-time developers in that, gives them a real perspective on what they're able to do. But in many cases, it also helped them recognize how much they really are doing. Um, they were able to compare that to other companies and factories that are using the technology. And I think they were pleasantly surprised and how well they fit into that whole place based on the curriculum we've been able to deploy. It looked like the students were having fun. Uh, by and large, has LiveWorks been a pretty good experience for them? I think LiveWorks has been a tremendous experience for them. And I'm going to say in a couple of different ways. The really interesting thing is that many of these students are, are, are kind of across the scale. Some of them have finished their undergraduate work and are just beginning their graduate work. Some of them are well into their graduate programs and about to graduate and go out and work. And for those who are just getting started, it was interesting to hear on the day one, we're setting this up. It became a transformable experience for them to be able to see, wow, all that stuff we talk about in the classroom is real. There's people really talking about digital thread. Is there anything that you saw at LiveWorks that perhaps that you kind of said, you know, hey, I want to go back and kind of implement that into my curriculum? We want to be able to help students not only understand this notion of digital transformation, but we want them to recognize how that fits within the digital thread. And so one of the pieces that we're still building out in the overall curriculum set is the idea of how we can use the digital thread driven through PLM, where then we can take CAD, PLM, tie it into the whole digital infrastructure across Kepware, ThingWorks, and Vuforia to where the ability to deal with a configuration control both on product development as well as manufacturing are all pieced together as part of that. Really critical to the notion of an agile manufacturing department. As we gr increase the notion of rapid development and our ability to deal with customization in a product, that ability to not only control the manufacturing from the PLM standpoint and the digital thread, but also the product becomes critical as we want to be able to agilely move across variations of a product and back and forth as the demand requires. As you move forward in your own journey teaching these kids, uh, where do you see uh, Yuri in five years? We've spent a lot of time over the last five years talking with professors around the world. A lot of them want to get in and understand how do I teach Industry 4.0? How do I teach about digital transformation? And historically, this falls in an edge for academia. It doesn't quite fit in computer science. It doesn't quite fit in engineering. It doesn't quite fit in IT. It, j it fits kind of at the intersection of all of these, and that's a, that's a troubled space for us in the academic community. We don't cover all of the information as one place. So one of the things I've been doing in developing the curriculum over the last six years is finding partners where we can try this curriculum out. And I'm really excited to see. One of the, the best pieces of live works for me was to get together with other academics from universities here in Boston to universities around the world and being able to talk about how we can share that curriculum and put that forward. I see in the next few years us being able to re 
release a curriculum in partnership with PTC that can rapidly change how many people are being able to take advantage of being informed about the digital transformation and the digital thread. So I, I see that in the next few years really the opportunity to expand this in a worldwide shared environment in a way that allows us to home grow students who understand this fundamentally across the world and can use these tools, understand them. What technologies do you see on the horizon or actually in, in practice now that you think are, are the next big thing? So I think we've seen a huge reticence in industry to embrace the notion of augmented reality. Not because they can't see the value in it, but because they can't wrap their heads around how they can make that valuable within their organizations. That's one of the things we're trying to change with the notion of teaching this concept of smart manufacturing. We want students to go out with a vision of what can be done so they understand how they can use digital transformation to increase sustainability and reduce cost and increase agility and hit all of the things that we're looking to do in our production facilities. The other piece to that that's critical is as we look at what we want to be able to do in the future and evaluate kind of where we are, we're seeing the tools be put in place, or let's say the sandbox be developed, that allows us to go do things that I think when we originally started off in this Industry 4.0 journey, we didn't even understand we were going to be able to do. And I'll give you an example of that. Inside of our augmented reality experiences, for a long time we've been trying to develop this notion of animations that would be unique to a particular experience. I want to open a water bottle and I'm going to create an augmented reality experience that has the bottle. And it's going to spatially track the bottle. It's going to position me to get to the bottle and it's going to show me how to twist that. The difference is... I don't want to have to create that animation for every different type of bottle and every different type of jar that I have out there. And what we're seeing is the ability to tie into the digital infrastructure into our enterprise systems and to be able to discretize augmented reality in a way that allows us to call that infinitely in different variables. That means that rather than creating an animation that is specific to a particular object or even a particular place, I can actually cue pieces of those in segments that will allow me to be able to follow a digitalized path on any route that I need to take. That's going to change how we use augmented reality, especially in the maintenance realm, where now I don't have to develop 50 different scenarios to pull apart a motor. I can discretize each piece, and depending on what needs to be done, I... It, the pathway will develop for me. That's a place I really think we're going to see change over the next few years. Obviously, we're going to see the rise of AI and driven solutions with analytics um, increase as, the, as we start to organize the data. But that fundamental change to how we're even looking at AR, I think, is one of the things we're really going to see in the next few years. That's cool. It's definitely taken on an evolution from simply a training uh, device to really, truly operational in uh, technology. Yeah, and that's one of the pieces with augmented reality that makes it so cool is that we've seen early adoption, right? A lot of training cases, a lot of situations where people want to use a spatially aware piece. It's going to recognize the device we're looking at and give me spatial awareness of that. But the notion of augmented reality pulling and pushing data from the enterprise means that we can completely eliminate the need for reporting. I can go do a maintenance experience, and as I go through that experience in augmented reality, it's going to talk to my maintenance systems on the enterprise. It's going to talk to PLM and let, let the system know, guess what, the equipment is now in place. My manufacturing execution system is going to recognize this was done by a qualified worker at this time, and it's now been completed. And that worker, as soon as they're done, all the paperwork is done because of the use of augmented reality. That changes how we do things, and sometimes that, that's a huge culture shift for us to reach our head or you know, just wrap our mind around. But the, the whole challenge is that if it's not going to change the paradigm and we're just using augmented reality instead of a PDF work instruction, we haven't actually used it to improve the process. We're just using a different tool. It has the power to totally transform how we do the job so that we can eliminate a lot of the tasks that were never value-added pieces in the first place. I want to thank you for taking the time not only to come with your students to LiveWorks, but also spending some time with me to talk a little bit about what you're doing and about the future of digital transformation. So I, I appreciate it very much. Thank you.
as well. Thank you.